Hello everyone and welcome to Microsoft Access 2016 Basics. My name is Steve Bishop and in this video we're going to be talking about how to create and use subqueries. So let's once again assume that we have a products table and a suppliers table. Now previously if we wanted to use some sort of criteria filtered through the suppliers table in order to select certain items within the products table, we would have used a where statement that included something like an in statement or an exists or even an any or all. But there's actually what I think is a simpler way of doing this, which is to use a subquery with joins. So let's say once again that we want to select some set of products from our products table. So we would just simply do our select star from products. But then we would add an inner join, and you'll notice that we have inside a parentheses another query. In this case, we are selecting the supplier ID from the suppliers table where the country is USA. And this would give us a result of the supplier IDs of two and three. Now you'll also notice that we have aliased this subquery as USA suppliers. So what's in these parentheses is considered a subquery. And then we have aliased that subquery again as USA suppliers. And that, has, that allows us to use this subquery as if it was a table inside of our inner join. And once we have that, we just simply need to add the on statement that goes along with our inner join. And we say that the link between the supplier ID for products is to the supplier ID of USA suppliers. Notice once again that we are using the USA suppliers alias in reference to that subquery. And we're pretending as if it is a table that has that supplier ID on it. This allows us to get the products from our products table that are going to be product ID four and five because the supplier ID is equal to two. And we've seen that amongst our suppliers, supplier ID two and three are from the country of the USA. Again, we could have used a where statement with ins or exists or any or alls to do some of this, but I really find that this syntax is a little simpler to work with because we're pretending basically that this subquery that gives us our own where statement where we can have multiple criteria and we can even return several different items in our select statement, it acts just like another table that we can do an inner join on. And that allows us to freely use the data within that subquery to display inside of our selects, which we will see a little bit later on in this demonstration. So let's go ahead and hop over into our access database and take a look at this. In a previous video, we were working with this non vendor people types query, and we were filtering the people types table according to this not like V asterisk, right? We were using a like statement to filter out the type name uh, where the type name is not equal to V. And then we were returning on as part of our select the IDs. And if we just take a quick look at the sequel of this, we'll see select people types dot ID from people types where people types type name is not like V asterisk. So this is a query that we can actually use uh, in combination with our people table to filter out just those people who are of a person type one or two, or essentially not a four, right? Because the non-vendor people types, if we run this query, we'll see just ones and twos. So if we only wanna see the people with a person types of one or two, we could do a join between the people table and the non-vendor people types query. And that's what we're gonna do in this example. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new query. So go create query design. And here in our show table dialog here, you'll notice that not only can we select tables, but we can actually select queries. And there we have our non vendor people types query, and we could just go ahead and add it. And then I'll close this. Now I'm going to add the people table and I could just simply right click and go to the uh, show tables and that'll bring up this dialog again. But I wanted to show you another way that you can just kind of add a table to a query. And that's just simply by dragging and dropping it onto the designer. Now you'll notice that when we do this, 
Access tries to automatically align or do the foreign key primary key relationship between fields of the same name. So that's why we see this line being drawn between ID and ID. However, this is incorrect. The ID for non-vendor people types is not the ID of the person. Rather, it is the person type. If we take a quick look again at people, you'll notice we have person type, and this is the foreign key for the person type of that person. So this is inaccurately linking these two. So we actually need to select it and delete it, okay, so that we don't have that link. Now, if I do want to create the appropriate link between this ID field and what we're gonna discover is that person type field, then we can just simply drag and drop the field from one to the other, and that will create the appropriate link. Okay, so now that we've done that, let's go ahead and add all of the people. So I'm just gonna double click on this asterisk, and that means that we're going to show all of the people records where there is a link between the ID from this non-vendor people types and the person type foreign key matches that ID number that comes from the non-vendor people types. And when we view this, we're gonna see there are the results that we're looking for. Notice person types of only two and one appear on this result. Now, one of the other things that we can do is we're going to perhaps want from our non-vendor people types. Right now, it's just returning ones and twos. And this is kind of a disadvantage of doing the uh, where statements where we're doing the ins, the anys, and that sort of thing. Because maybe we want to have more than one field appear from this non-vendor people types query and use that information in this query, right? Maybe we want to display, for example, if we take a look at uh, at the design view here. Maybe we want to see the actual type name of the people types. Well, right now it's unselected, right? Under our show, we don't have it check marked. So when we look at the SQL view, we'll notice that only the ID is being selected. So I want to change that by just simply clicking on this check mark. And that once again adds it to our select statement. So now our select statement has that type name in it. So now we have more than one field being returned by this query, which we can see if we just run this, right? ID and type name. Uh, so now that we have both of these fields being returned from this query, this non-vendor people types, now in my query 10 that I have here, I can actually use that information, but I'm gonna close it and reopen it because it doesn't remember any of that. Uh, it, it still remembers, it's got kind of this cached information about that query. So I actually have to reopen this and we're gonna to go to the design view. Um, and maybe it still doesn't even show. Did I save this? You know what, I may not have saved this. So let's close that and close that again. Try this one more time. There we go. So now type name appears in our non-vendor people types query. So now I can just drag and drop that field onto here. And when I do that and run my query, we'll see now that the type name also appears. So not only do I have the person type field, but I now have the type name. And that might be very useful information for this query. And in fact, I don't think the person type is all that important here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the design view and rather than doing people asterisk, let's drop that and we'll just select the fields that we want. So I'm gonna do first name, last name, date of birth, salary, and then we'll do um, active, and we're gonna leave person type off, and then I'm just gonna drag and drop that uh, to here, and that drops them in, in front of that type name. And now when we run the query, we'll see all of that good information, and the type name is there instead of having the type ID, right? That, that person type ID field there that didn't really make much sense in our data set. Now that's one way that we can write a subquery. Uh, and if we take a look at the SQL view, you'll notice that Access did a lot of the automatic naming for us because we actually already aliased this query. We gave it a name, we gave it a non-vendor people types and Access is smart enough to be able to use the name of a query as if it was a table. And that's why we see non-vendor people types is being listed there among the select, right? We're seeing the type name from non-vendor people types being selected. And then here's our inner join on, again, non-vendor people types. And we're 
on that ID of non-vendor people types is where it's equal to the person type value from the people table. But you saw that what I had don't shown in the, the PowerPoint slides was that we could use parentheses to kind of uh, create a subquery. And one of the ways that you can do this, uh, or kind of the simpler way, I think, in, if you're trying to just create a subquery, is you can create your queries as we have before uh, in our non-vendor uh, people types here. And we can just go to the SQL view, and we can copy this, and then we can go into the query that is currently using the alias. And wherever we see the from statement, and we have the non-vendor people types here, right? This is essentially where we are calling our subquery. Uh, what we can actually do is replace this in our from statement with the actual query itself. And I'm just gonna drop this down into a few different lines. I need to surround that with parentheses. So I'm gonna create a couple parentheses there. And then I'm gonna paste that actual query from the non-vendor people types, okay? So I can just paste that that query right inside of some parentheses, and then I can give that an alias. So right now it's it's named non-vendor people types, but in order to absolve any sort of confusion and get rid of any confusion, I'm gonna just call this as, and I'm gonna call it SQ1, which is kind of a, a thing that I do for uh, subqueries. I have subquery one, subquery two, but I, I should probably name it something a little bit more um, descriptive of the query, but I just kind of wanted to demonstrate that you can actually rename this some sort of alias, okay? So that's what I'm doing. It's something a little bit different than the original query. Now, since I alias is SQ1, that means any references that I have to this subquery, I need to also fix. So that includes our select statement up here. I need to change this to SQ1 because that's our subquery, again, that's being aliased. And then also our uh, in our on statement here, where we have, again, where we were saying non-vendor people types, I'm gonna need to change this to uh, SQ1. And now, now that I've made those changes, so I've got my subquery, this is essentially, again, the same query that we had here in non-vendor people types, except I just copied the actual SQL query, pasted it here inside of my query 10, put parentheses around it, and it's in my from statement, then I aliased that to give it a name so that I could then reference that query inside of my query 10 for my select statements and my on statements and even where statements if I wanted to. And now that I have given this a new alias and I've changed all of the references in my selects and my inner joins and ons and all that good stuff, now if I run this again, we'll see exactly the same results, except now they are all completely contained inside of query 10. So if I wanted to, I could actually just go ahead and delete this if I wanted to. I, I probably shouldn't because I know I have other queries that rely upon it. But now query 10 is not dependent at all on non-vendor people types to exist. It, it, I could delete it theoretically, and that would not impact at all what's going on with query 10. And you'll see in the designer view, what's happened is it's noticed that there is this subquery and it's even given it the label that I aliased it as so that we can still kind of goof around with it here inside of our query uh, designer. And that's pretty cool. That's one of the neat things about Access is that it can uh, identify these subqueries that are written into the query itself and kind of use the designer to show that uh, in an appropriate way. So there you go. There's how you can write subqueries using just a, a regular old query, right? We just created a query in a previous video called non-vendor people types. And of course, that again had this simple design here. So you can design your query using the designer and give it a name. And then in another query, you could then actually use that, right? We saw with the design view, we could right click, we could go to show table, and that gives us the ability to select that query and then use it as if it was a table. Or we could even go right into the SQL view itself, go right into the SQL and paste that query inside of some parentheses in the from statement, just give it an alias and then use that alias throughout the rest of our query to reference the results from that query. And that is pretty cool stuff. So I hope you learned something from this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks so much for watching and you have a great day. Yeah.